in this video, I will be discussing how we can tackle the application question, or AQ, in short. Most students find the AQ very daunting, and are unsure of how they can tackle it. The AQ is the last portion of your GP Paper 1, and when you reach it, you would have already been mentally drained from answering the structured questions and summary. However, fret not. There is a simple structure that we can always use to tackle the various forms of the AQ question, and I will be explaining it in this video. The AQ is not as scary as it might appear to be. In fact, its purpose is something that we should appreciate. So, why do they test us the application question? The first thing that we need to understand is why someone would write an article. When anyone writes an article, their purpose is to persuade you to buy into his or her argument. If a writer writes an entire article about why technology is bad, he wants you to believe and buy into his argument that technology is indeed bad. So, in order to do this, the writer would present many reasons or points for his argument. Essentially, what we are doing in the AQ would be to evaluate the writer's reasons for his arguments and whether we agree with them. Anyone can write an article on any topic. Even I can write an article tomorrow about why the A-levels shouldn't exist. Right? Ultimately, the responsibility lies on the reader, or us in this case, to read the article and evaluate the writer's arguments. As the reader, we need to decide how persuasive the writer's arguments are, and whether we want to ultimately buy into the writer's arguments. And finally, we will need to come up with our own opinions. So, as you write the AQ, you will be answering questions such as, do I agree with the author's argument? Do I disagree with the author's argument? Do I agree with one argument but disagree with another? Do I think that the writer is exaggerating his arguments? Do I think that the writer is making sweeping statements? Or do I realize that the writer is using emotive language in his essay? All these are some questions that you have to ask yourself as you attempt the AQ question. However, do note that this list is not exhaustive and you are not limited to these questions. So now that we know what is the purpose of the AQ question, how do we write out our answer? Here are two sample AQ questions. The theme of the first question is work and leisure, and the theme of the second question is food. Unlike the essay which has similar themes and topics coming out each year, the AQ theme can be very random. In one year it was sports, in another it was fashion. Now, do you see what these two questions have in common? Both these questions have elements where you need to evaluate the author's arguments and also link it back to your society. In the first question, they ask us how far do we agree with the author's views on work and leisure, which is asking you to evaluate the author's arguments. After that, they ask you to apply this theme to your society. In the second question, they are asking you how applicable you find the observations to your society. So by now, you should already realize that there are always two portions in the AQ. Firstly, evaluation, where we have to evaluate the writer's arguments. Secondly, application where we have to apply the ideas that the writer proposed to the context of our society. So basically, we have two portions, evaluation and application, which will form the basis of each of our body paragraphs. In some questions, you have to focus more on the evaluation portion, and in other questions, you might have to focus more on the application portion. However, do note that both portions must be present in all your body paragraphs for all types of AQ questions. Next, you might ask, how do I structure my AQ? A basic structure of the AQ would be as follows. Introduction, followed by first body paragraph, second body paragraph, and lastly, conclusion. So, two body paragraphs would probably be the sweet spot for most students. I would recommend you to write two paragraphs for the interest of time. If they are well-crafted and well-written, you can still get a band A for your AQ. However, do feel free to have three paragraphs if you have the time and energy to do so. Now. Firstly, I'll be going through how we can write an introduction. So, what is required for the introduction is basically our position and also the task or subject. What do I mean by this? For position, what we want to do is state our position on the writer's arguments and whether we agree or disagree with them. Secondly, by task or subject, I am actually referring to talking about the writer's arguments, the writer's reasons, or also talking about the writer's stance. Now, finally, the third and last thing that we need to briefly mention would be whether these issues are applicable to the Singapore society. So, there are actually four ways the body paragraph can turn out. 
you can agree with the writer and find it applicable to your society. You also can disagree with the author, but find it applicable to your society. Or you can agree with the writer, but find it unapplicable to your society. And lastly, you can disagree with the author and find it unapplicable to your society. So there are four different ways you can do this. Do note that just because you agree with the writer's point, does not mean that you have to say that it is applicable to your society. If you agree with a certain point, it can still be unapplicable to the local context. Do remember to include all this information in the introduction. I will now go through two examples of how we can write an introduction. So, in the AQ questions, they always give us an idea of what the writer is discussing. For instance, a simple question would be, Writer A discusses issues related to technology that results in short attention spans. How far would you agree with her observation relating your arguments to your own society? In this case, they tell us that the writer discusses issues regarding short attention spans. What we need to do is find the writer's stance on it. So, a simple introduction could be, Writer A asserts that the advancement of technology, especially social media, has led to shorter attention spans, which he believes is a cause for concern. I largely agree with Writer A's argument, and this is also largely applicable to my society. You see, in this case, we have covered the writer's stance, our position, and also whether it is applicable to Singapore. Now, let me do another sample introduction, one that is much more sophisticated than the first. This time, the question will be, Writer A argues that the fashion industry has many detrimental impacts on society. How far will you agree with her views, relating your arguments to your own society? So, a possible introduction that we can write for this is, Writer A rightly argues that the fashion industry has various detrimental impacts on society, such as exploiting adolescent insecurities, promoting ageist attitudes, and enforcing conformity. These observations are largely applicable to my society. This time, we explain the writer's stance by using his arguments and reasons. When we say that the writer feels fashion has promoted ageist attitudes or enforced conformity, it is basically saying that the writer thinks we need to be concerned. Next, we also give our position. Notice that we are essentially saying that we agree with the writer, since we use the terms, writer A rightly argues. Right? The use of this phrase, rightly argues, is a more sophisticated way of saying I agree, without using those words exactly. Words such as I agree are words which every other person will be using their, in their AQ. So, by using terms such as this, it helps your essay stand out. Lastly, we say that they are applicable to our society. So, similar to the previous examples, we have covered all three grounds. The writer's stance, our position, and whether or not it is applicable to our society. If you want to disagree with the writer and do not want to use the phrase I disagree, how can we do it? So, we can write something along the lines of Writer A makes dubious claims and proposals on the benefits of fashion, such as how it can function as a circulation of identity and how it increases our confidence. However, I find that these views are not applicable to my society. In this case, do you realize that we are clearly disagreeing with the writer's points? We can tell this from the phrases that we use, where we say that writer A makes dubious claims and proposals. So this is another way that we can write our introduction in a more sophisticated manner without using the common terms I agree or I disagree that everyone else is using. So, case in point, for our introductions, we need to ensure that they are short and sweet. The above two examples are good enough to function as an introduction, and they are only two to three sentences long. Save the bulk of your time for the body paragraphs, which will give you most of the marks. So, how do we write the body paragraphs? Now, before we begin, remember that we need to have an evaluation and application in each body paragraph as I have previously mentioned. What do I mean by this? The evaluation is basically whether we choose to agree or disagree with the author. There are many ways that we can evaluate. For instance, I agree with the writer. Or we can also say, I disagree with the writer. Or maybe you would like to say that you agree to a large extent, or that you disagree to a small extent. However, these are the most simple ways of doing this, and these are the most simple ways of evaluation, where you just give a reason why you agree, why you disagree, probably give an example, or maybe evaluate. Right? What we should do 
is add levels of sophistication to our evaluation. So, one way of doing this is by analyzing logic. Is the writer using any fallacious arguments? Are his arguments gross generalizations? Did the writer go down a slippery slope as he wrote the article? Perhaps the writer cherry-picked his examples. These are all ways that we can add layers of evaluation in order to impress the examiner, show balance, and get a higher mark. Let me give you an example. As your topic sentence, you can write something like, I do think that the writer rightly argues his point. However, I believe that he has slightly undermined the veracity of his arguments, given his wide use of emotive language. So by writing like this, it's like saying, yes, I agree with the writer, but because of his use of emotive language, we have to be very careful while analyzing his argument. This can bring you to a higher band if done correctly, as it is able to show balance. Now, let me give you another example. We can write something along the lines of, I do think that the writer rightly argues that her point. However, the writer has also made several sweeping statements and gross generalizations while explaining her point. Again, by doing this, we are essentially saying yes, I agree with the writer, but I am aware that the writer might have made some sweeping statements. So, the above two paragraphs are ways that we can show a much more sophisticated evaluation. Also, this shows more balance rather than showing an outright agreement or an outright disagreement with the writer, which is very one-sided. By doing this, you show depth and rigor in your evaluation and thought processes. This will definitely impress the examiners. Now, for the last part of the body paragraph, how do we add the application to your society portion? This will be the second thing that we need to discuss about. So to do this, we simply need to add a small sentence behind what we have written above. So let's look at the above sentence. We have already talked about our position and showed some evaluation in our topic sentence. What we need to do now is simply add some words behind this and we can just say my society or Singapore faces similar issues to the one that the writer has mentioned. Done. Basically, you have said that you agree that the arguments are applicable to your society. You see, these three short sentences will basically form the first three sentences of your paragraph and this sets the tone for your entire paragraph. What we just did was say that we agree with the writer, but there might be some problems in his logic because he uses some generalizations. However, I do think that most of the points that he talks about are applicable to my society. So, one way we can think of this is through thinking that this is a short essay plan for each body paragraph. Firstly, why I agree or why I disagree with the writer, which is basically a way that we evaluate the writer's points. Focus on the why. Next, are there any problems with his logic? For example, whether he uses sweeping statements, whether he uses cherry picking of examples, whether he was being insensitive in his arguments. You'll usually be able to find such evaluations in the GP exam, and I'll be talking more about this in future videos. So do subscribe to make sure that you're notified when I publish a new video. And now, lastly, would be the application to Singapore portion, where you say whether you think the issues are applicable to Singapore or whether they are not applicable to Singapore. If you are confident enough, you can even merge the points together as you write your AQ. For instance, where you evaluate the writer's points while referring to your society. This is something that you can do once you are more comfortable with the basic structure and thought process. Again, in the application to Singapore part, there are also ways that we can add more sophistication to show balance and show evaluation. One way that we can include sophistication to the application portion would be to add some evaluation to our application. Okay, so this might sound complicated, but let me show you some examples of how I can do this. For instance, one way I can do this is by saying something along the lines of this issue is applicable to the Singapore context. However, unlike how the writer describes this issue as a pressing issue, this problem is already being tackled in Singapore, although more must be done. Right, so in this case, what we are doing is basically saying that we feel the issue is applicable to Singapore. However, the extent to which it being applicable is different to what the writer mentioned. So the writer mentioned that this is very pressing, which means that he thinks that it's a very serious issue. 
However, what we are saying is that Singapore is facing the same issue, but to a much lesser extent. So it's an issue, but not a pressing issue. So that is how you can add sophistication. Another example would be, I recognize these short attention spans caused by technology is very relevant to Singaporean youths, especially in the classroom. Realize that in this like short sentence, we are saying that is it is relevant to a certain group, which is the Singaporean youths. So this gives it a certain context when you are applying it, rather than saying that it is relevant to Singaporeans in general. Again, this shows some depth in thought as you apply to the Singapore context, rather than just saying, yep, I can observe this in Singapore too. Okay, so all of this might seem a lot to take in, but trust me, it will get easier with practice. I will be doing more videos on how to evaluate arguments and how we can link to the Singapore context, so do subscribe if you want more of such content. Now lastly, I'll be talking about the conclusion. Honestly, there is nothing much for me to talk about in the conclusion, but I would just say, make it short and sweet, just like what we have done in the introduction. One key point that you should note though, which is one pet peeve of many examiners, is the use of annoying redundancies such as in a nutshell, all in all. Many students like to start conclusions with such phrases, right? They end with, in a nutshell, the situation is not as serious blah blah blah, or something like all in all, this is why blah blah blah. So, try not to use those annoying redundancies as examiners would see it in every other paper which would definitely annoy them. So what you can do is just start with what you want to write in the conclusion which is a very quick summary of everything that you have mentioned. Again, let me give you an example to make this clearer. So, a sample conclusion would look something like this. The fashion industry may not be as detrimental to the society as the writer has suggests, given that, and you give your reason. Furthermore, the writer's criticisms, while valid, may have been overly generalized. And now we end the conclusion by saying, in fact, in my society, most of the writer's observations are not true in most inter instances. So you realize that for this, it's just a basic um, recap of your entire AQ and your entire train of thought. Okay, but at times, or most times actually, you will not have any time left for the conclusion. Time is so tight in the GP paper 1. So if that's the case, it's more important for you to finish up the body paragraphs rather than write a proper conclusion. The body paragraphs gives you more marks, remember that. In such cases, if you can, do just provide a simple one sentence conclusion, something along the lines of, in conclusion, I believe that the fashion industry is not as detrimental to society as the writer suggests, and most of its observations do not apply to my society. I suppose that this one liner would probably only take you about 15 to 20 seconds to write. In this one liner, we have also recapped our stunts which is basically saying that it's not as detrimental as the writer suggests. And secondly, it shows the application portion, where you say that most of his observations do not apply to Singapore. I would suggest that if you're rushing out a one-liner conclusion, just use the term in conclusion, in order to signal to the examiner that you are going to write your conclusion. So, all of this that I have gone through is basically a brief skeleton of how you can write the AQ and a type of structure that you can use. Do know that as long as you have the demands put in place, the evaluation, the analysis, the application, you can write it in any way you want. But I feel like it might be easier for students to follow a certain structure. Also, do remember to subscribe to this channel as I'll be posting more such videos of how we can tackle the AQ with a focus on the evaluation and application portions. Yep. And so that's all for today and do remember that what you need to do is constantly practice your AQs and if possible try to get as much feedback as possible by submitting these AQs to your teacher. The AQ is something that is very new to all of you who have just gone to JC and definitely you'll need some time to pick it up. So don't worry about it and remember to work hard.